Hey everyone, I'm Tamara Krinsky with the Red Carpet Report. I'm here on the set of the ABC Family hit show, The Fosters. They had an incredible season one, and we're going to talk to the cast about what we can expect in season two. Okay, so you were just telling me you guys are shooting episode nine right now? Yeah, yeah, we're in the middle of nine, we're finishing it up, and then we'll do ten, and then we'll take our little break and come back in the fall and finish the season. Nice. So when this whole show started, your character, Brandon, very much of a seemingly a, a good kid, and that has changed a lot. So talk about the journey through season one and what you're most excited about in season two for fans to see. Okay, yeah. Um, well, that's just it. I mean, I think for me personally, uh, Brandon, his character started, you know, point A. He was this really put-together kid, very talented, had a scholarship ready for him, you know, for music. He knew what he wanted, and he knew how to do it and how to get there, you know. Callie comes in, and uh, ever, it always starts with Callie <laughs> coming in. And ever since then, it just kind of seems like maybe you know not necessarily that it was her fault or her doing per se, but it, timing-wise, it all kind of worked that uh, you know everything snowballed and Brandon kind of lost his grip more and more as this, as the season progressed. So, and then it, you know climax at the very end with um, with Vico, and you know there was a few things there with Callie too. Um, and then with Danny and, and Mike and all that stuff. So he really was stretched out thin by the end. Um, and I think that was sort of his journey was his more, I mean, a downward spiral makes it sound a little, you know, more sad than it is. But it, it's, a, it's a, a journey. It's a life lesson that he had to go through. And it's a very normal story, you know, like for a high school kid to, you know, be fighting for, you know, his love, you know, mm -hmm. and, and in his mind, you know. I what do you have to say about that? You know, I mean, you guys, you and Callie are kept apart by some, I'd call them extraordinary circumstances you're dealing with, adoption and family and some interesting definitions there. But it's still that feeling of, oh, I can't have the one that I want. Yeah, exactly. What, how do you, how do you tell someone how to deal with that? What advice would you give about that? Well, you know, I mean, for me, it was totally relatable. It was actually really cool to play because I totally remember being in high school, like 15, 16, having a really intense crush on a girl and like feeling at the time like you will do anything to like make it happen or like, you know, make them happy or whatever it is. And and that was what Brandon was going through. It was just in his his own situation, his own story. And um, it, it, it was actually kind of a cool full circle moment for me, you know, just to kind of be able to portray that. Um, no, I think it's a very normal life thing for people to go through, you know. Um, hopefully you don't end up with, you know, uh, someone beating you up in a parking lot. Yeah, but let's talk uh, about your hand for a second yeah. and the role that music has played and how that's going to change in season right. two. Um, well, music uh, for Brandon won't go away. Um, you know, he, he gets hurt uh, by the end of season one, and, and he's definitely going to be dealing with that and sort of reeling from this whole experience. Um, but... It, I think there's definitely sort of this vibe of, of him picking up the pieces mm -hmm. and focusing on himself mm -hmm. and, and, and really kind of not pushing everyone else out or anything, but, you know, reflecting and figuring out how to get back to old Brandon, mm -hmm. you know, how to feel in control again and feel like, you know, stable um, again. And I think that's going to come from him doing things like focusing on music. Um, he gets into a band. He, he uh, mm -hmm. finds himself joining a band and... That's that's sort of how his music shifts. Is it, it become you know from more classical stuff into more you know just expressive kind of whatever you know. You you play as well, right? Yeah, I do. I do. I, I play piano before the show actually, which is you know kind of a cool thing that I share with with Brandon. But um, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a lot of fun to have this character who's evolving so much, and I feel so close to him now just because he went through so much now, and it'll be cool to see what else he what he goes through in season two. And um, talk about the evolving relationship with your dad on the show and your mom's on the show. Yeah. You know? um, well, you know, there's some unresolved stuff there with... with Just a uh, bit. A little bit of little unresolved bit. issues there with, with Mike and Brandon. Uh, the the vibe between them in season two, it's, it's yeah. Brandon sort of feeling really ashamed, honestly, mm -hmm. uh, and not not knowing how to handle that. That's going to be one issue that will be handled in season two that has not been resolved yet. Everything else has been kind of squared away for him, which is, which is nice. Um, so maybe he'll, maybe he'll get to a wholesome place. Who knows? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He, um, the great thing about Brandon is he, even when he makes mistakes and messes up, it's always out of a place of, 
it, he's just trying to do the right thing, mm -hmm. even if it's the wrong thing to do. He's just trying to help somebody or help himself or get an answer, you know, and, and that's what I love playing about him is it never comes out of a place of, you know, a dark place or, or a place of re revenge or anything like that, you know. Well, and that's one of the reasons that we really root for him throughout yeah. this whole series. Um, something else, I was talking with Maya about this before. Um, so there's not a lot of room in the house, which, <laughs> <laughs> and so for you, if you had to live in a house where you were sharing a lot of space, what would be the worst part about that? I mean, like for me, for example, I need my long shower in the morning or else I'm just not going to wake up. Right. What, what is it for you? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I actually like long showers in the morning too. I actually, I play some, I play music too in the morning. So they, they'd have to be okay with that, honestly. What kind of music? What's your wake up jam? Ah, uh, wake up jam. I like Bob Marley in the morning, you know, like some more chill kind of stuff or anything really like nice and, and relaxing and, and maybe uplifting or, you know, kind of happier tunes. Just, I, I just, I'm a big fan of kind of waking up, listening to something, you know, having some coffee, you know, waking up and whatever. But I definitely have a ritual in the morning, so they need to, they need to get used to it. All right, you heard it here. Respect the ritual. I want to wish you best of luck with season two, and thanks for talking with us. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for watching our coverage of the Fosters. If you like the video, hit like, and if you want to see more, hit subscribe. And leave us a comment telling us what you're looking forward to in season two of the Fosters.